Hey there, it's Chris Mack. On today's episode of Chris's Kit, I want to talk about first knives. And by first knives, I don't mean for us older guys who are just getting into EDC and are trying out what they want to carry and things like that. I mean more so for youngsters. And I got my first knife whenever I was five years old. And my first knife was this classic SD. And this was actually a gift from my aunt, and this was her graduation present from nursing school. So I've used and abused this thing. <laughs> the, the little spring clip that goes in there for the scissors is gone. I'm missing the toothpick and the tweezers. It's just, it was a first knife. I got it when I was five. It got used, abused, and beat on. And this was the result of a very memorable butt whooping because I, uh, after telling my parents for several days that my hair was too long and it was in my eyes, I decided to take these little scissors here and I took my bangs off with them. And uh, that was also the result of my very first buzz cut as well. So because I'm talking about first knives for youngsters, and we'll, we'll get to that discussion at the end of the video here, these are 10 budget-friendly knives that you can give to your youngsters or the, the young ones in your family. And you're not going to care if they get used, abused, beat, or broke because every single one of these are under $10. And I'm also going to give my thoughts on them as well. So let's go tabletop first and take a look at them. And then we'll... Uh, tabletop with these three knives that I want to show you here today. And I don't know why I feel like we all... If, if you're watching this video, you know the size of an Altoids 10. Here is an Altoids 10 for size comparison. Three knives. First one is a Open L. This is number seven. There's no real mechanism in here. It's just on a pivot. And it does have this twist locking mechanism in there. Secondly, I cannot pronounce the name of this company to save my life, but this is a classic Barlow style knife with these nice wood handles. It's got some heft to it. It's got blade one and blade two, and it has this little linear hole in the back. The last one is a classic old timer. This is the old timer PAL. And of the three, this has got the deepest nail nick, so it's very easy to open. Just that one blade in there, these nice scales and inlays, just a classic, timeless little knife. Okay, so let's talk about these three knives. First, I want to start with the old timer. This is the quintessential grandpa's knife. So why do I think this is a good first knife? Because I feel like because it is the quintessential grandpa's knife, some grandpa is going to give something like this to a grandson someday. It just has that vibe, it has that feel, it just has that connotation to me. And it, again, being under $10, you can't quite go wrong with this. It, it's quite a nice little blade. The second knife is this Barlow style. And again, I can't pronounce the name of the company that makes it. But for the price tag of under 10 bucks, it's got, it's got some heft to it. It's a very nice knife. I actually got this for a wedding because I wanted a classic looking knife for suit and tie wear that wasn't something like this. You pull this out at a wedding, nobody's gonna raise an eyebrow. You pull that out at a wedding, someone's gonna give you some looks. <laughs> anyway, and for me, the Barlow style knife, it took me a while to figure out why I have the thought process that I do about this style of knife that I do, but I remembered. And it was because this old book that I read as a kid called The Oxcart Man. Long story short, this farmer takes all of his goods and products from the year, his grain, his wool, and everything else. He loads them up with his ox and his cart, hence the name of the book takes them into town and he trades all those in for the supplies that he's going to need for the next year and he gets a Barlow knife that I actually believe he did get for his son. So this is a classic look and feel of a knife that I feel like is something that you do give to 
a son and it's because of that book that's why i just have it in my head it's a good first knife i don't that's that's where that comes from for me so anyway and even for us adults for the price tag for the look for the feel for the finish it's quite a nice product the only thing that i do dislike about it is for as nice as it looks and as sturdy as it's made some idiot decided to put china right there and it just takes a little bit away from me but all in all very very nice knife very pleased with this the last knife on this list is the open l number seven and i'm gonna get some hate mail after what i'm about to say for this <laughs> For a first knife, I think it's okay. I It would be a good first knife for a kid because it is under 10 bucks. When something happens to it, you're not going to care. And oddly enough, again, because this video is about first knives for youngins, the roundness of it, because it's almost like a dowel rod, the roundness of this knife, I feel like it does have a good grip to it especially for younger, smaller hands. However, whenever it comes to long-term for us adults, I do not understand the cult following behind this. I do understand that being that it's a French company and European knife laws are very strict and they are only getting more strict by the day. Sorry, you guys. I, I don't know what to say. But it, because of that, the fact that it is a folding knife that does have a lock, I understand for European knife laws being what they are, how this fills a niche and it fills a need, and for that, I'm actually appreciative of it, and I do like the knife for that purpose. However, living here in the good old US of A, and I can have a locking knife that doesn't require this kind of finagling, this doesn't make sense for me here like I said, long-term first knife I can see because under 10 bucks it breaks, no big deal. But when it comes to us adults and the cult following that there is for this, I just don't get it. And I know why. There are, when I first posted, whenever I first bought this and I posted a picture of it on Instagram, I got comments and direct messages aplenty and they were truly split 50-50. And by that, Half of them were like, it's a great knife, I have several, it's an awesome collection, it's wonderful, it's timeless, it's classic. Okay, all that I agree with. The other half were people telling me, it's like a gremlin, don't get it wet. <laughs> For two reasons. One, I had several people tell me, frequently oil the blade because the blade will rust very, very quickly. The other reason, and it's one of those, if I got one or two messages about it, I'd be like, okay people have their experiences but almost verbatim at least a half a dozen for oil the blade at least a half a dozen for don't get the handle wet because when you do the wood swells and it makes the actual open and closing of the blade itself impossible and it kills the knife those are do knife care kind of deals for me and i could understand that I mean, carrying a classic knife like this, you're not going to take this to, like, survival school kind of a deal. You're not going to use this in search and rescue kind of thing. That's that's where I got my love of strong, robust knives is doing search and rescue. So for me, carrying knives like this isn't going to be my everyday. So I wouldn't have, be carrying this and using it in a situation where most likely I'm going to drop it in a river kind of a deal. So that for me isn't too far of a stretch. It's a, hey, it's a classic knife, you know, the, use your head when you with where you would be using this. The thing that I dislike about this most is this. You hear that? <laughs> I sat for two hours one evening just trying to get that noise to stop, just trying to break it in, and it won't. And I'm legitimately deaf, and that hurts my ears. That is that is the number one reason why I cannot get on board with this knife. That, And again, like I said, it fills a niche in Europe because of their knife laws. I understand that. They, they're not allowed to have this over there. So you work with what you got. I understand that. I respect that. That's fine. I don't have to carry this. 
so I'm not going to. <laughs> That's my two cents worth on it. Because I am someone who did buy this because I wanted to try it out, I wanted to see what all the hype was about, and because I personally can't get on board with it and I do not like it. But I know there are people out there who do love these. They like them very much. They, I, like I said, there's a cult following behind them. Somebody is going to appreciate this a lot more than me. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and actually put this in the 350 subscriber giveaway. There you go. So just because I don't like it doesn't mean somebody else won't like it and doesn't mean that they won't appreciate it more. So I'm going to pass this along because of that. That being said... Let's get to the discussion portion of this video and the part that I, I want to learn about you guys. So, how old were you when you got your first knife? How old do you think someone should be before they get their first knife? Like I said, I got my classic SD whenever I was five years old, but I know 15 year olds who are not as responsible as some five year olds that I've met. So, do you think it's an age thing? Do you think it's a responsibility thing? Again, how old were you when you got your first knife? What was your first knife? Tell me all about it. I'd love to hear it. Put all those down in the comments below. And because I've shown off all of these knives, I'm going to put links to all of these down in the description for any and all of them. Like I said, just because the one I don't like doesn't mean that you won't like it. And, or you can take my word for it and steer clear of it entirely up to you. In any case, I'm going to put links for all of these down below in the description. And those links are at no extra cost to you. They are affiliate links. I do get some kickback from that, which means I can put that into doing more things, trying out new products for you guys, and doing videos like this. And then I can also trial and error stuff and find out I don't like it and throw it in a giveaway. So... <laughs> That's it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, it's Chris Mack.